Because of historical Turkic conquests, nowadays Iranic speakers only inhabit the southern part of Central Asia and Western Asia. However, in the Iron Age, before the Turkic conquests, Iranic speakers inhabited Central Asia as well. In this video you will see the DNA results, predicted appearance, traits, phenotype and of course GD match results of an Iron Age Turanian from Turkmenistan. This individual belonged to the Iranic culture and was speaking Iranic languages. Uh, he also had a very Iranian Y DNA haplogroup. He was a guy, so he had a Y DNA haplogroup. He had a Y chromosome and Y DNA. And his Y DNA haplogroup is R1AZ93. According to my Nashakot tool, he's predicted to have blue eyes, a Greek shaped nose, and red hair. The reason he's predicted to have red hair is because he had a mutation in MC1R that correlates with the red hair color. Uh, the reason he's predicted to have blue eyes is because he actually had blue eye haplotype 1 and 2, which are the most important uh, variations for eye color. And he also did not, he really did not have any like exotic alleles that have to do with darker coloring. So uh, my program just predicted him to have blue eyes because of that, like a typical, he had a very typical genotype for a Northern European. And my program predicted him to, look, to have uh, blue eyes and red hair. Uh, and if he took a 23andMe, it would actually predict him to have 52% chance of blue eyes as well. In the Compt variation that is Val versus Matt, he is Val, which means a higher Compt and zygomatic activity, which means a quicker reuptake of dopamine, which means lower dopamine levels in the brain. Um, the implications is that it is higher pain threshold, better stress resiliency, however, there is a decrease in attention and memory. Uh, this is not a very European genotype. Europeans tend to be warriors with the IE instead. Uh, this is a genotype that's common outside of Europe instead of Europe. In DRD2 Pro 319 Pro variation, he also had a genotype that's more common uh, outside of Europe rather than in Europe. Pretty much everybody outside of Europe has GG here, which is equ equivalent to CC that you can see on the screen. Uh, but in Europe, people also have AG and AA, which is equivalent to TT and CT, as you see on the screen. Yes, uh, you know, SNPDA is just very messed up with the, with the namings for the proteins, but you can just translate C to G in your raw file, or you can translate T to A in your raw file you know, if you want to do some exploring. Here is his genotype in another variant, also in DRD2. This one is typical for Europeans and pretty much everybody else outside of Europe as well. Um, now, once again, if you're going to go and look this up on your raw file, I have to warn you, as I've said before, you're not going to see CC or CT or TT in your raw file. What you're going to see is you're going to see GG or AG or AA. And you're going to see this for a lot of SNPs that you, that you find on SNPedia. Uh, just make sure to translate the C to a G and T to an A. They always correspond. The C always corresponds to G and T always corresponds to A in that case. And this is the variant in MC1R, which is the reason my tool predicted him to have uh, red hair instead of blonde or brown. He did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was likely lactose intolerant as an adult. He did not have derived EDAR, which is a gene implicated in mongoloid or East Asian facial features. So no mongoloid or East Asian facial features for him. And surprisingly, he actually had the sociopath gene. In fact, he was uh, homozygous for the sociopath gene, which means he had two sociopath alleles uh, in the OXTR. He had two derived OXTR. Moving on to GD match, this is what he scores with the Eurogenes K13 calculator. Uh, as you can see here, he is scoring 39% West Asian, which is kind of um, this is kind of a typical result. You would if you ignore the South Asian, it looks like a mixture of Caucasus and something from Northern Europe, like Caucasian plus Russian or something. But there is that 12% South Asian, which makes you understand that this is a Central Asian person, not a Caucasus person. Uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to groups of Dagestan and Tajiks, but with a very high distance. And he can be modeled as a mixture of like Baloch, which is uh, Pakistani, Southwest Pakistan, plus North Swedish or Brahui, which is also the same place as Baloch and the same genetics as Baloch, uh, plus 40% North Swedish. Uh, this is the result with the Eurogenes K13. This is just a general picture, but because I couldn't fit the whole screenshot on the screen. Uh, but if you want to know the exact numbers for everything, you literally can just download the sample from link in the description and upload it to GD Match and see what he scores with any calculator you want. But uh, what you can see here is that the largest category is South Central Asian and the second largest category is North Caucasian. Uh, interestingly, what, does, what else? He scores a little bit of North Sea. He scores a little bit of Finoscandian, maybe 9% Finoscandian. 
and uh, this is his result with MDL PK16. Now here, he's scoring 21% step, but the step is not, on this calculator, it's not representing the entirety of step, it's only step specific drift. So to, to get his actual step score, the amount of like Yamnaya or maybe um, a step herder ancestry he has, you have to add up the step plus some of the Caucasian plus the Northeast European. And when you add that up, you get basically half. You get a half of his ancestry is from uh, this Western step herder group. With the oracle for this calculator, he's closest to people of Yegnob, um, Gorni Badakshan. And he can be modeled as a mixture of like Badakshan groups plus uh, some groups in the Caucasus. This is what he scores with Harappa World, and you will see that this person is very much different, very unlike uh, the modern people who inhabit Turkmenistan, because he scores 0.7% Siberian, and he scores 2% American. And that's it. And East Asian, is there any East Asian here? There's no East Asian. But average Turkmen today is going to score around 30% of those categories combined, uh, versus this individual who scores like 2%. With uh, the oracle, he's closest to Tajiks, followed by Stalskaya, which is um, in the Caucasus, and Urkara, which is also in the Caucasus. I think Urkara is like another name for Lux. I'm not sure. It, mu it might be. Uh, I've heard that somewhere. But uh, he's basically closest to Tajiks and Caucasus, but with a very high distance, not a very good distance. And this is what he scores with the pun DNA LK10. Now remember that the CHG category here is representing not only CHG, but also Iranian Neolithic. And when you don't make that dis distinction, you can get the impression that this is a Caucasus individual, but no. Look at the ASI. He's scoring 8.8% ASI. This is super atypical for the Caucasus, not a Caucasus result. Uh, however, the oracle actually lacks Tajik or Pamiri uh, references. It literally, the oracle does not have Tajiks or Pamiris. And this sample is getting modeled as closest to Chechens and Lesgins, who are in the Caucasus instead at very high distances. But it can be modeled as a mixture of Makrani, which is like Southeast Iranian, or Baloch, uh, with some groups in Russia. And this is what he scores with Gedrosia K3. Notice the only 12% East Eurasian, and do you know, all of this East Eurasian that he's getting, that's all from ancient North Eurasians. That's not from Mongoloid, that's not from recent East Asian ancestry. But the average Turkmen on this calculator is going to score 35 or 40% East Eurasian, compared to this Iron Age Turkmen, who's only got 12% of it, and all of it is from ancient North Eurasians. None, none of this East Eurasian here is from actual Mongoloid ancestry. This is what he scores with the ancient Eurasia K6, now you can see uh, the dominant components here are Natufian and ancestral North Eurasian which is kind of typical for Caucasus and um, South Central Asian groups. And the Oracle is basically modeling him as a mixture of modern South, South Central Asian, or like Southeast Iranian or Southwest Pakistani, plus Russian or Finnish. And this is what he scores with the Gidrose K12. On this calculator, you gotta add up the Sintashta step herders, plus a little bit of the Caucasus, plus a little bit of the early European farmers, and that together you would get the uh, the total Aryan or uh, actual Sintashta ancestry, because on this calculator, Sintashta actually does not represent Sintashta. It represents something a little bit more northern than Sintashta. And with the oracle, he's basically like a typical Tajik, uh, Pamiri Tajik, uh, plus something from Europe, a little bit more European than the typical Tajik, in fact. Um, which is kind of a typical result for, like, this is what I would expect an Iron Age person from Turkmenistan to be like. And this is the official G25 for the sample. Now, the official G25 is not quite the same as Tajik's. Uh, it's definitely a little bit more shifted towards the Caucasus. And it, in fact, you can model it as a mixture of like half Caucasus plus half uh, Tajik. And I think Rushan, uh, Rushan is the most northern or the most northern European shifted of the Tajik's, isn't it? Uh, you correct me if I'm not correct. So basically, this was a very light colored Iron Age guy. Uh, he resembled modern Tajik's and Caucasians. And he lived in Turkmenia, and a lot of people, most people in Turkmenia in Iron Age resembled him. Maybe not in coloring, but in autosomal DNA and GD match results. And only in the early Middle Ages, we got the formation of the Turkmen nation as we see today, uh, who score 30% Mongoloid, who have a, like Turkic admixture. This individual did not have any Turkic admixture. This is the Turkmen before the Turks came there. And um, very interesting sample. Uh, you can download it sam this sample in 23andMe format from link in the description. 
uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and give me suggestions for other videos uh, to make in the future.